Good morning and welcome to another practice session. Um, before we get started, I want to again say something about the fires that are burning here. It's fairly horrific and uh, we're really grateful to the firefighters and the emergency people who are trying to get it under control. Um, as far as we know, uh, all the people who we've been in touch with are all okay and we're aware of one family that's had to evacuate and another three or so that are on the edge of evacuation and we certainly hope that they're okay and their homes are okay. Um, but what we know right now is that everybody themselves is making it through this okay. Um, so uh, we're hoping that we'll get some rain and snow coming up and that we can start to get these fires out. Um, and thank you to everybody who's reached out to us during this time. And the, the evacuation zone came close to us, but then it moved away. So we are fine right here. We're really worried about the people in the mountains. But what can we do? What we can do is try to be in the moment and try to be balanced. So go ahead and do the bear a little bit. And just feeling your head as if suspended from above the rear crown of the head connecting to heaven. And feeling your feet on the ground, quiet, bubbling wells open to earth. Letting your mind rest in the Dantian. Just really putting yourself in your middle, in your center, feeling everything happening around the Dantian. As that happens, the mind will calm. Feeling your arms moving through the air as if it had the substance of water. And letting the whole body relax. Another couple swings. And take a break. So in the last session and in this one, we're working on a notion that we call cross balance. And that's Maggie Newman's term for it. When it was first introduced to us, it was called cross substantiality, which apart from being clumsy, um, doesn't really get the idea of balance. And what it is, is that there's a connection from one foot all the way through to the opposite hand, and from the other foot all the way through to its opposite hand. And that happens throughout the form at every point. So you've got this kind of cross going across you that um, helps you be balanced in the moves. So Maggie called it cross balance, and I really like that name because you get a balance between the extremities of the body and it also really helps you be balanced as you're going through this. And so there's a bunch of aspects of this. A big part of it is the separating of empty and full. We're always working on that. The name of the art, Tai Chi Chuan, means the martial art of Tai Chi. Tai Chi is the yin yang symbol, separating empty and full. So the heart of this art is separating empty and full. And it's not just that I put yin over here and yang over there and never the twain shall meet, um, but that there is always yin and yang in everything we are doing and they need to be appropriately relating to each other. That's what balance is. And so getting these lines through the body, across the whole body, helps you actually get that balance of yin and yang 
and be real clear about the distinctions between empty and full. So we start this with the separating in the legs. So do a little bit of work sitting in and out of 70-30. Start in the back. And what you're going to do is go forward. And as you're going forward, the front leg is gradually filling, but you're not using it to hold you up yet. And then there's a moment in the middle where it changes. And now you're in the front leg and you're letting the rear leg release. As you sit back, it's the same thing. You're relying on the front leg. And then there's a moment when you're in the back and now you rely on the back leg. So this is night and day interchange of empty and full. You're using the back leg, come forward and stop right before you're gonna shift into the front leg. And really feel that your front leg, even though there's weight in it, even though a bathroom scale will show weight, that that's a passive weight. The leg is continuing to hang away from your pelvis. The rear leg is the one that's supporting you. Your pelvis is sitting on top of it. And then you change and now you're in the front leg. The front leg is now the one that's holding you up. You can continue to shift and as you do that, feel the back leg hanging away from you. And sit back. As you sit back, stop right before you go into the rear leg. So as you're doing this, there's weight coming into the rear leg, but you're using the front leg. And then change. Now you're using the rear leg and the front leg is moving away from you. So you can shift back and forth and get it real clear when you go into one leg or the other. You're staying in the front leg and then boom, you're in the rear leg. So only one of the two legs is doing the job of holding you up and it switches from leg to leg in a second. It'll happen a little faster going back, but it's the same distinct. You're in one leg, you're in the other leg. Change sides. Start out in the back. You're sitting on the back leg and your front leg is free, loose, independent. It feels as if the leg is moving away from the pelvis. You start shifting forward. Weight goes into the front leg, but it's still hanging. Stop right before you start using the front leg to hold you up. Switch. Now you're using the front leg and let the rear leg hang away. Sitting back, the rear leg is still hanging away from you. You're using the front leg. And then in an instant, you change. Now you're using the rear leg moving away from the front leg. Forward, rear leg is supporting you. Change, now you're using the front leg. Back, front leg is supporting you. Change, now you're using the rear leg. So just watching that moment when it changes from one leg to the other. It's very distinct. Just because there's weight in the leg, that doesn't mean it's holding you up yet. And then you use it and it holds you up. Forward and back one more time. Forward, change, front leg. Back, still using the front leg. Change, rear leg, and take a break. So whenever we're doing this in any of the postures, the relationship of the two legs is different. And one of the things to think about is the directions. When I'm standing on a leg, the leg is coming up into my pelvis. My pelvis is sitting down on top of the leg. So the two are moving towards each other along the length of the leg. The other leg should feel like it's hanging away from your pelvis. So even if you put a little bit weight into it, it's still hanging away. And then suddenly you change and now this leg is pushing up into the pelvis. My pelvis is sitting down on top of it and the other leg is hanging away from the pelvis. So take a 70-30, either one will do both sides, and stand on the front leg. So feel that the front leg is really coming up into your pelvis, your pelvis is sitting on top of it, and feel that the rear leg is hanging away. So it's like the rear thigh is stretching away from you, not pushing up into the pelvis. And now sit 50-50 and push up into the pelvis with both legs. This is the double weighted thing we don't want to do. So now there's my pelvis is sitting on both legs. Both legs are pushing up into it. And then go back into the front leg. So the front leg is coming up. The pelvis is sitting on top of it. And the rear leg is hanging away. And turn and do it on the other side. I'm facing the way so you can see my rear leg. I start out in the front leg. My front leg, I feel force coming up into the pelvis and the pelvis is resting on top of it. The rear leg is hanging away, 
hanging away from me. It's not pushing up into the pelvis. Sit 50-50 and feel that both of them now are pushing up and the pelvis is sitting on top of two caps, you know, two tops of the legs. That's the double weighted place. So back into the front leg and let the rear leg hang away. Really feel that. Two different directions. One leg is coming up into the pelvis. The other leg is hanging down away from the pelvis, lengthening and take a break. So um, Ben would say, you only have one leg. And I think this is what he's talking about. You're only on one leg at a time. Maggie says, one leg owns both sides of the pelvis. So when I'm on my front leg, my front leg owns both sides of the pelvis. When I do the 50-50 thing with both legs pushing up, then my front leg owns one half of the pelvis, my back leg owns the other half of the pelvis. That's a mistake, that's double weighted. As soon as I sit back and I release the front leg, now the back leg owns both sides of the pelvis. So this switch, it takes time to get your weight from one leg to the other. They're apart from each other and it takes time to get back and forth. It doesn't take any time to switch which leg owns both sides of the pelvis. So even as I'm shifting over and weight is starting to go into one leg, the leg I'm standing on owns both sides of the pelvis. And then in an instant, the other leg owns both sides of the pelvis. So this switch between empty and full happens in the blink of an eye, in a heartbeat, at the speed of thought. <laughs> The body, physical reality, takes a while to follow that. But the change in relationship happens instantaneously. So let's do a first third. And when I, we do this first third, I want you to really feel one leg owns both sides of the pelvis. You only have one leg all the way through it. 70, 30s, 100%, anything there. So from the top. Sit on to the right. The right leg owns both sides of the pelvis. And continue. Suddenly the left leg owns both sides. Left leg. And you shift and then right leg, right leg, and then left leg. Still the left leg, still the left leg, right leg as you come into word off right. As you sit back, first it's the right leg and then it's the left leg. And it stays on the left leg as you swing as you come back towards the front, and then it's your front leg. Feel the changes happen in an instant, even as the rate weight shift is gradual and slow. Right leg. Right leg, left leg. Obviously it's still the left leg. But then as you shift forward, there's a moment where it becomes the right leg. Right leg, right leg, right leg, left leg. Changes in an instant. You only have one leg. One leg owns both sides of the pelvis. Back leg, 
Back leg, front leg. Left leg, right leg. Front leg. Back leg. Front leg. Back leg. Right leg. Left leg. And close. So I know we said we were going to work on cross balance and then I just did only the legs. But you have to have the clear distinctions between the legs in order to have it match across the body. So we'll do another first third. But first I want you to do ward off uh, left and really try to feel the old cross substantiality. The front leg is full, that means the right hand is full, and the left hand floats on top. So feel a line of fullness, we call this the line of stability, from the front leg to the opposite hand. That like holds you up and helps you keep your balance, and then the other hand is different from the bottom hand. It's light and floating. So you have this line of fullness, one leg to the opposite hand. And take ward off right. So now the right leg is forward and the line of stability, the cross balance line goes to your left hand, which is the back hand in the ward off. And feel that connection, right leg to left hand. And then the right hand is light. Take white crane, feel solidity from your right leg to your left hand that's down by your thigh. And then the right hand, which is up here, is light. The lightness of the front leg reflects in the right hand. Bottom hand is heavy. And take roll back. Sitting back, feel the solidity from the rear hand through to the, the rear foot through to the front hand. Line of stability runs out there. Fullness of the rear hand is matched in the front hand. And turn, feeling that fullness all the way through there. And then even as the arm swings and you come back towards the front, you still feel that connection of fullness. So do that a couple times on your own. Turn, feeling the right hand full, even as you come back towards the front. And reset. Turn. Rear leg, front hand, even as the other arm swings. You keep that connection, that line of fullness running through the body. Okay, so let's do another first third. And in this first third, of course, you've got to have the blink of an eye, speed of thought change between which leg you're standing on. You only have one leg. And you also have that same instantaneous change between the hands. And the opposite hand crosses and balances the full leg. Oh, before we start, I'm in mean, one of Professor Chung's books, he says right here at the very beginning, as you sink into the right leg, feel that the left hand is full. This is cross balance. This is really important. I won't say it again, but do it in every move. So right at the very start there, Professor Chung told us, have this, and this is so fundamental and critical that it's up to you to do it in every move. He's not gonna waste print space reminding you of it in every move, but it's there in every single one. So from the very beginning here, as soon as I shift into the right leg, feel that fullness in the left hand. So certainly don't feel the fullness in the right hand. So do that, start in the V. And sink into the right leg and feel that matched in the heart of the left palm. This is very important. Professor Chung will not remind you of it again. Now do it wrong. 
sink and feel that your right hand is heavy and feel now this is a toppling place, right? Not balanced, not cross balance. Now do it once more. Sink and feel that the left hand has fullness. That line across the body balances you. So this is very important. It's in every move. And go ahead. Right foot to left hand. Left foot to right hand. Left foot to right hand. So the full hand is on top here. And then you shift, the bottom hand gets full. Word off left, front leg to lower hand. Continue. Word off right, front leg to rear hand. As you sink into the front leg, it's still the left hand. As you sit back, the line of fullness goes to the right hand and you keep that as you turn and swing the arms. Don't worry about it too much here and press into push. But now feel from your rear leg to your right hand as you turn. And shift into the bottom hand. So the bottom hand matches the fullness of the right foot. As you step, keep that bottom hand full. And now it's weird, it goes into the hook. So feel it go from your front foot to the hook. And keep that feeling as you turn, as you come into lift hands. You can really feel it here, rear foot to front hand. And as you drop the hands, keep that feeling of fullness across the body. And as you step, the right hand is heavy and long. And then shift from your front foot to the left hand. Left hand is full, right hand is empty. Left hand stays full, matching the rear back leg. Stays full. Stays full. And then front leg into top push hand. Bottom hand is loose and empty. Watch it switch here. Rear leg to long front hand. And keep that feeling as you turn. Left hand is full as it drops, as you step. And then front foot to top push hand. Sit back. Feel the left hand match the rear foot. And as you shift forward, feel the fist become full. You shift. Now it's from your right leg all the way to the high left hand and keep that as you turn and step. Rear foot to top hand. And then punch, front foot into the punch. Okay, feel the connection from your rear foot to your left hand and keep that connection as you turn. And now feel it go from the rear foot into the right hand. Step, shift, stay sitting down. Both things cross. Both legs are full, both hands are full. Standing up. Let both legs empty, let both hands empty. Shift, left foot to right hand. Shift, right foot to left hand. And stand up. So that's really paying attention to the cross fullness. Just as important is the empty hand. So we're gonna do another first third here in a second. And then I think it's be time to turn it over to Beth. Um, 
And uh, in this one, I want you to really pay attention to the difference between the two hands. Oh, actually, I'll do a little bit more than that. <laughs> oh, I got one more thing I want to do. Um, uh, so take word off left again and feel your bottom hand really full, match in the full front leg and feel the right hand empty and light. So feel that the two hands are different. Feel that they're different. They're not the same. Let them both be the same and then let them be wrong. So the top hand is full and the bottom hand is light and fix that. Get the bottom hand full and the top hand empty. Look at it in roll back. So you sit back and the two hands are different. The back hand is light. The front hand is full. And as you turn, the back hand stays light, even as it swings and comes back towards the front. So do that again from roll back. Back hand is light. Front hand is full. Rear foot to front hand. Front foot to back hand. And turn, keeping the back hand light and the front hand full, even as the arm swings and you come back towards the front. So this distinction between the hands is really important. We're skipping over push because it's a little complicated in there. Um, but every place else, you should be able to feel that real strongly. And if you look through the form and you look what's going on, much of the time, if you think about what a possible application could be, you contact the other person with the light hand, not the heavy hand. So, you know, if I'm uh, doing um, push hands with Beth, I put my arm out and it's ward off. And this is the light hand, um, not the heavy hand. And so um, you want to you wanna really get that. And it makes sense to contact somebody with a light, receptive, sensitive hand rather than with a full doing hand. When it's time to push, when it's time to push, I might have that connection there. But when I'm just trying to feel somebody, then I really want this feeling of lightness, of expansiveness, of not rigidity. So um, this happens right here at the very beginning. So this is the other thing I wanted to do. So if you start out in the opening posture and go ahead and let the hands come up and feel that both hands are really light here. Both of them are light as you go through the opening move and do it a couple times. And really try to have that feeling of the top hand in ward off in both arms, not heavy. Both hands have an emptiness. And now take ward off left again and feel the distinction between the two hands. Line of fullness, line of emptiness. Feel that this hand, the top hand is like your hands in the opening move. So really try to feel that. And come back to the opening move. We'll do that again another couple times. Both hands are light as they come up here. Both hands are light. One more time, both hands are light. Take roll back and in roll back, Really feel that your back hand here, this is like a ward off. So this is like the light hand in ward off. It's back hand here. So feel the difference, line of fullness and stability coming from the rear leg out to the front palm and a corresponding lightness and emptiness in the rear hand as you turn, as the arm comes up and comes back towards the front. Roll back, turning, rear left arm is light free moving, agile. Front hand is full, solid. Great. 
do uh, White Crane a couple times. So actually we'll do the um, Animal Frolics version of it. So um, you can start with your feet in a V. And as you step, the bottom hand matches the full leg. The top hand is light. Let everything come back in and do it on the other side. The bottom hand connects to the full leg. The top hand is light. Bottom hand is full. Top hand is light. Stop here for a second and feel the two really different. Again. Bottom hand is full. Top hand is light. And what happens a lot of times is people get this backwards. They're lifting this hand up and so it gets full and the other one is floating. And so go ahead and let that happen and you'll feel yourself off balance. And now put the cross back in and have the top hand light. Feel yourself cross balanced. So let's do one more first third. And in this one, I want you to Try to notice the lightness of the empty hand. So it's easier to feel the full hand first. So, you know, you may need to do this a couple times, um, either work on your own or rewatch this video. You may need to do it a couple times to get the feeling. But this time through, really try to feel the lightness of the hand. And so it's surprising, places like single whip, this is the full hand, cross balance, this is a light hand. Okay, let's do it again. Go ahead, right foot connected to left hand. This is very important. Professor Chung will not remind you again. And now feel that that left hand is light. Both hands. Right hand fills, left hand is light. And now they switch. Left hand fills, right hand floats lightly on top. Top hand is light. Front hand is light. Rear ward off hand is light. It easily swings. The back hand is the full one. Feel the left hand light as you turn. The right hand gives you stability. Feel the right hook hand light. Bottom hand gives you stability. And then it changes. The hook hand is full. The front hand is light. Feel the difference between the two hands here, especially as you drop the hands and bring it back. The rear hand is light and mobile. And then feel it change as you go into shouldering. White crane, the top hand is light. The bottom hand gives you stability. Feel how the swinging right arm is light all the way through here. Bottom hand starts out full, changes to being empty. And watch the change here. The left hand fills, the right hand is empty. This is light as it comes across you and drops at your side. And then the left hand is light. It floats right under the armpit. The 
right hand which moves a lot is light. Both hands are full. Neither hand is full. Great, I'll turn it over to Beth now. You have to work on this. It's an awful lot of left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. Um, so try not to get bewildered by that. Um, give yourself the time to really try to figure it out and feel it. And uh, it'll become clear with time. And so here's Beth. So this empty and full thing and the cross balance, um, Lee has referenced all of this, but I want to take a look at it a little more. Um, it's, as he said, it's not yin, then yang, it's yin and yang. They happen together. But one of the things that this line of stability will give you is a place for the empty side to um, be able to move without taking you out of your um, root and stability. So, for example, and you can do this with me, um, there's white crane and how we go into brush knee. So, as your right arm drops and your left arm is the full one that gives you that sense of stability, your right arm has to make a big motion. And it's the line of stability that gives you the ability to move the light hand. So let's do that just that much again. Standing here feeling, you can let your right hand down first and feel the connection. And it, you know, I can only draw in front of me. My arm doesn't go behind. But in fact, the um, things come through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so from his back leg, it comes up through here and out to the arm. So it's not just something frontal, great. Um, th feel it through the whole body. Feel your back being involved in this stability. You know, we draw it like this because we can't really draw it back there, but do feel it back there. So as you go into white crane, so feel just the, that line that runs through the whole body out to your opposite hand. Now it's not that I'm pushing down. What makes it weighted, what makes it balance this is just, it's your mind, it's how you perceive it. So go ahead and stand here a moment and really feel how attention to the fullness of your left hand really helps give you balance. And then the right hand can come up light and not disturb your balance. And we were just doing this with Lee, but let's do it one more time again before we move on. Um, now, let your bottom hand be kind of floaty and make your raising hand be something that you're putting a lot of attention into. And notice how that pulls you out of your root. So change it. Let this bottom hand be the one that gives you stability, and that will make the top hand light. Now, as you start to turn, keep the stability feeling in the left hand, and notice how, I'm gonna stop you with it extended, notice how in this place, the left hand helps you be stable and keeps you from having the right arm pull you out of your stability. So do it again, and this time make all your attention be in the right hand and following how it's trying to pull you away. So that line of stability gives you the opportunity to have a light arm and hand that can take a lot of distance and travel. And as Lee had said, I think on Tuesday, he talked about how it's usually the empty hand that takes more distance. And 
Um, this is a great example of that. So let's just do this one more time. Get your bottom hand, not that you're pushing down, it's as if it's just resting on something that's helping keep your balance. The right hand is light, and as you turn, that left hand keeps you centered and balanced. And that allows the right hand to have all this freedom of movement without taking you out of your place of stability. So this happens all over the place. This greater distance that the empty hand travels has the ability to take the greater distance because your line of fullness is keeping you um, balanced and returning to the center. If I do this and this hand is the one doing things, it's kind of pulling me apart. Whereas if this hand is balancing it, this hand can do all kinds of things and it's not disturbing my sense of balance. So let's do another first third. And I want to bring your attention to that quality, the way that having that feeling of full cross balance allows the empty hand to be free and move without disturbing your sense of rootedness and stability. And begin. So left leg, right hand gives you stability and the left hand has to travel farther. Watch how your left hand swings without disturbing you because of the cross balance of fullness. This is another good place to feel this. It's hard to talk you through it all because it's all changing and so many things are going on. But do try to feel how your cross balance of fullness allows the freedom for the cross balance of lightness. And your fist is moving a lot here. It's the empty side. And 
And this is another place you can really feel it. So it's more difficult to pay attention to the, the empty um, line of stability, the empty cross balance. But once you get a sense of the full line of stability, you can start to notice how that frees the other arm. It also frees your empty leg, and in particular helps you take steps. So say right away, Oh, right from the very start, feet in a V, and you're standing here 50-50, and as you sit into your right leg, this is the very important thing that Professor Chung won't tell you again, your left hand mirrors the fullness of your right leg. And so at this point now, you're going to be able to step anywhere you want to, and go ahead and feel how this quality really frees your empty leg. I'll come back to the V and now we'll get the other feeling and you can let the right hand be the hand of fullness. You can also let both hands do the same thing and notice that that has the same quality. But So then you do both hands and now try to free that leg and I, I just start falling over right away that quality of stability that goes through the full side will free your empty leg as well as the empty arm. So do it again where you sit into your right leg. The left hand balances it and notice how much easier it is to put your leg wherever you want it to go. So put it where you want it, take a step. Now it changes. The opening move is special, so we're just not going to work on that right now. But, you know, go ahead and feel the lightness in the arms, the rootedness in the feet. And what happens next? As you sit into your left leg, your right hand balances it. And as you sit into your right leg, feel it fill the left hand. And now that you've got this feeling, notice how that frees your left leg. And then you can put it where you want it to go. And just come back to this place and now make the top hand be the one that you're relying on, that you're, you're using for stability. And try, try to step where you want. See what happens. So it really makes a difference. It makes a tremendous difference. The ability to step empty is um, really reliant on your ability to get that line of stability running through the whole body so that your empty leg is truly free to take a step. I hope that you could feel that difference. It seems pretty uh, drastic to me. I feel like as soon as I go from cross balance to double weighted, I start falling over. Um, my feet start wobbling, the one I'm standing on, and, and things just kind of fall apart. So um, if you can feel that, that's a good start for all of this stuff. And um, let's look at some of the difficult steps. So going, I think, right here from the start, when we go into ward off left, 
and get yourself on your right leg. Your left hand is balancing it. Turn to the corner. The left hand is still helping you keep your balance and take a step. You can step, no weight, pick it back up right in place. And as long as you've got this sense in the bottom hand, you'll be able to do it better. And then begin to shift and notice the place where the back leg wants to empty. Hold it here a sec. If you have trouble turning the back foot in in a 70-30, there's a good chance that this separation of empty and full is holding you back. So rest your legs a second. This is what Jane would call having a hitch in your get along. So if I'm coming into my ward off and I'm pushing out of this leg, I'm still using this leg, pushing the leg up into the pelvis as we were doing before. Then when it's time to, to complete the move and turn in the back foot, that's the hitch in your get along. It, it gets in the way. You can't let it smoothly turn at the right time because you're still using it. So this cross balance will solve a lot of um, problems that come up as you're doing the form. If it's difficult to turn in that back leg, you may be doing it too soon and you may not actually have shifted into the front leg yet. So give yourself time to get into the other leg and then notice how the freeing leg has more space to turn in. Let's look at it in um, going into single whip. So let's see, I guess I'll start facing this way and then I can come into it with you and go. So now your right hand is balancing what's happening and that's going to give you the ability to empty that front leg and turn so that you're still upright, you're still balanced and you're actually still using your left leg. Your right leg is hanging empty. And then when you shift to the other leg, feel how that instantly wants to fill your left hand and the left hand comes across the body so that you're free to extend the empty hook and you can kind of wind yourself back up and do it again keeping the sense of the left hand and the right foot and that arm goes easily so you can wind it a couple times and then let's do it the other way backwards. Think about really pushing that right arm out. And right away, I feel it pull me right out of the ground. So let that be the empty feeling that sends it out. And now it's time to step. So you've still got your stability in your left hand. This is a big step. The only way you can make it is by letting your line of stability give you a place to root from. Go ahead and change your sense of it now and make it be out in your right hand and try to take that same step. Right away, I lose my upright, I lose my sense of balance. So rest your legs a sec, shake them out. Um, so I hope you're getting some sense of this. If you're not, just keep trying, keep working on it. And um, we'll do another first third. And this time I want you to notice how much easier it is to take a step when your cross balance of fullness is helping keep you stable. And then your cross balance of emptiness, lightness, has a freedom that it only gets because you've got the other line keeping you stable. So let's give that a try. And go. 
It's in your left hand. I will not remind you again, except that we keep reminding you. idea in your left hand helps you take a step. And now it's the right. Left arm is free. Cross balance of stability and it changes. Now it's in your left hand stays in the left hand, helps you step. Now it's in the right. Right arm is easy to move and free without pulling you out of your stability and your... I have a hard time talking all this through. Lee's a lot better at this than I am. Feel how the, you have freedom of stepping here. Because of your line of fullness through that left hand. I just want to do one last thing as we were doing that. I realized how going, coming from lifting hands to go into um, shouldering, there's a real tendency for people to do this and pull back and lose balance. So even a place like this, so weight is in your left leg. As your right arm is coming down, let it create a sense of stability, and then your left, your empty right foot can come in with freedom and step back out with freedom. So try it both ways, just a little bit. So as you 
drop your hands, let go of that line of stability, kind of pull your left hand back. That's what tends to happen. So if you pull your left hand back, your right foot is going to get pulled back in an, an unbalanced way. I start to wobble on my foot. Now, let the cross balance of stability help you with your empty leg and your empty arm. And then you're much more likely to have stability as you go through that. So one more time and then we'll call it a morning. Letting that cross balance help you bring the foot in and step back out. Great. So this is worth exploring on your own, spending some time with it. It doesn't just come like that, but it really will make a difference in how it feels to do the form. So carry on. <laughs>